though, um, thank you all for coming. I uh, hope you're having an awesome show. Next up for you, we have quite a special presentation from Techland, the people who brought you Call of Juarez and uh, Dead Island. And they're going to be showing you their all new game, uh, Dying Light, and they'll be showing you quite a sizable chunk of it as well. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Timon Schmechtala and uh, Radostor Grabowski. I hope I got that right. Uh, and they'll uh, be taking you through the game. So please give it up for Techland. Hi guys, good afternoon. How is the expo so far? Is it good? Great to hear that. Okay guys, my name is Timon Smektala and I'm a producer for Dying Light. And this man right here is Radek Grabowski, who will be my and your co-pilot on today's flight. Well, basically, he gets to play the game and I have to do the talking. Okay, Radek, please sit. Let's start this. Whew. Okay, uh, so... You may know Techland from such games as Call of Wires and Dead Island, but I'm not here to talk about these games. I'm here to tell you about our new one, about our new project. Uh, we represent a team of 150 people who work hard day and night to create an experience that, in my opinion, might just be the, the, the most immersive action survival zombie game ever. And that experience, that game, is Dying Light. Of course, you don't have to believe me when I say that Dying Light is the most immersive action survival zombie game ever. You don't have to believe me when I say that Dying Light is the game you have to play next year. After all, I'm just a developer, uh, even worse than that, a producer who tries to sell you his own game. So with that in mind, it's very special for you guys. And in, in fact, it's so special that, that up to this point, only few people have been able to see this. Uh, select members of the press, some GameStop managers, and basically that's it. So whether you like it or not, guys, that makes you part of history. That makes you a part of a moment that is extremely important for our team and for Dying Light. And if you ask me what that special thing is, well, it's the first ever live public presentation of our night gameplay. So, as I said, no one has seen this before, and you, are guys, you guys are the first ones. So, um, with that being said again, um, I have to tell you that I would like to tell you a little bit more about what Dying Light is, and most importantly, what it isn't. And what it isn't is just another zombie game. And as you can see, that's not only my opinion. A few other fine gentlemen said that as well. And what it is? Uh, well, uh, the short answer is this. Thank you. But that's not the thing we are about to show you. Well, that was the short answer, but the, longer, the long one is well, well, quite longer. As you can see, Dying Light is a first-person, open-world, action-survival horror game. I know it, it is a little too long for a hashtag, right? But all of these words are important. Dying Light is first-person game, so it means that everything that happens in, in, in our game, you get to witness it firsthand. You get to see it with your own eyes. So if there's a zombie that tries to bite you, you really see his teeth in front of you. If you are falling from, from, the, from a building, you really see the ground closing in. So it's very visceral, it's very brutal. It's, I don't know if it's okay to say it, but it's very in your face. Then, Dying Light is also an open world game. So it means we put you in this huge game world uh, which we are free to traverse any way you like. If you see something that's within the reach of your hands, you can reach it, you can grab it, you can climb on top of it. And to, to, to allow you to do that, we've created the system which is called Natural Movement System. And as you, can see, as you will see, it, will allow, it allows you to really move with limitless freedom. And I think that is something that will not only 
change the way people look at zombie games, but I think it will also change the way people look at FPS games in general. Then, Dying Light is an action survival game. And what we mean, what we mean by that is that that's the game in which uh, uh, survival is your ultimate goal. There are lots of lots of zombie slaying game out there, out there. There are lots of lots of games in which you have to kill zombies to succeed. In our game, you can do that, but you don't have to. We always try to give you other options you can choose. Uh, you can run, you can hide, you can evade zombies, you can run through roofs to go, to go around them, you can use traps in the environment, you can, do, you can use things that you've just built to fight zombies and to escape from zombies. And then, um, uh, it's, a, it's a game with a, day in the, with a day and night cycle. And I think that's like the most important pillar of our game because with this, it's almost like you get two games in one. During the day, you scavenge for supplies, and you get that kind of regular traditional zombie game where you have the adv advantage over zombies of being intelligent human, uh, intelligent human being, agile, fast, quick thinking, armed with a weapon. But during the night, the zombies transform. And with them, the gameplay transforms as well. So then the zombies get more aggressive. They get more vicious. They get more intelligent. They are able to cooperate. Uh, they can climb on top of things just as good as you. So that means that you really have to bring your best game to the table just to survive. And well, night is the ultimate challenge, and you're about to see how it works. So now it's demo time. As I said, that thing right here, it's global exclusive. So thank you once again for, sh for sharing that moment with us. And Radek, are you ready? Yes. You guys are ready? Yes. Yes. So buckle up, fasten your seatbelts, and welcome to the city of Haran. <coughs> As you can see, Radek can climb anything. He can slide, he can vault over things. He can move with almost limitless freedom. <coughs> yeah, Radek, I know views are nice in our game, but let's proceed with our mission, shall we? So we have to go to that building and see who's there. There you are. It's good you're here, pal. There's a critical supply route that's gone to shit, and we need to clear it. Our scouts use it day and night, and I need you to do a maintenance run. You'll be arming some of our traps. They help us keep the route clear. But you need to hurry. We're running out of daylight. You don't want to be out there on your own once the sun goes down. Good luck. So it looks like the mission is quite simple. We just have to activate a couple of traps. Break a leg, man. Don't get yourself caught. There's danger here. That's the first trap. It is activated, so now we can use it. Radek, maybe show these guys how the trap works. As you can see, all of the traps in our game are remotely triggered, so you don't have to stop and look at them. You can just run to them and use that trap, and all the zombies behind you will get electrified. The next trap is at the end of the street, but as you can see, there are lots of zombies there. But as I was saying, we don't have to fight these zombies. We may, but we don't have to. So maybe we just go head through the roofs. Do you want us to go left or right? What, what do you want, guys? Left or right? Left. Okay, so go left, Radek. Nailed. Spikes, the infected are all over the street. Use the street walks then. Take to the rooftops and stay out of their reach. The car is surrounded. No way I can get to it, Spike. But you still got some of those fire records, which you don't you? Just throw them to the ground. Those poor bastards are easily distracted. The next trap is the car right here, but the, uh, as you can see, it is surrounded. But thankfully, we have some decoys we can use to distract zombies. Okay. Not bad. Keep it up, you might just make it. Okay, 
Okay, now let's see how that trap works. Nice. Okay, let's move on. Well, that's the combined power of uh, next-gen setup and our in-house Chrome Engine 6 engine. That thing right here is an example of our dynamic encounter system. It's a system that randomly God generates damn, events this. like that for each playthrough, and because of that, each playthrough is different. We can help this poor fella, but we don't have to. Shall we help him? Yeah or not? What? Yes, okay. So as you can see, the, in uh, the environment is quite interactive, and you can do oh, things like Jesus. that in the environment. I was scavenging for supplies here when I heard those things. I blocked the door, trapping myself inside. Thank you. If not for you, I'd be one of them right now. Okay, blah, 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 when but we don't have time favor. for this. Radek, move on. But as you can see, by helping people, you, are, you, you get rewards. Wow, that's one of our special enemies in our studio. We call him the Toad. <laughs> that's quite a contraption, Spike. Nice, huh? It's three times as bright as an ordinary street lamp, and the lights don't fuck us up. Oh, there's an airdrop coming, but we don't have time for that. But, but as you can see, people from outside support the survivors with airdrops like that. I'm done with the lamps. So you ready for the next round, man? You better move it, brother. That sun is sinking fast. <laughs> that was a light trap, a trap that is especially useful during the night. When you activate it, the whole intersection is flooded with lights and the zombies get disoriented for a second. Oh, that's my favorite weapon. Let's see how Radek uses it. Whoa, as I said, brutal. <laughs> okay, and that's the last trap. Spike, the whole goddamn district went down. What the hell is going on? There's one more thing we need to do. No, oh, Radek, there's too many of them. See how it looks here. A decoy. Still lots of zombies there. But thankfully we can use that trap set by someone else. Don't just stand there, Radek, please.
Yeah, but you don't have to look for the gate. Use the natural movement system, yeah, like this. Okay, looks safe. Now we just have to go back home. But it's night, so zombies may transform. They don't see you. Spike, they got some freaks after me. And that was the nighttime gameplay of Dying Light. So basically, basically that's, that's it for our presentation. And if you have any questions, and if we have time... Yes, we've got time for a few questions. So um, anybody has any questions, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. And uh, I think we've got one at the back to start off. If you could stand up um, when you're asking the questions as well, please. Thanks. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you very Hi. much for sharing with us. Um, just wanted to ask, there was kind of two things. Do you have any class systems that you've moved across from uh, Dead Island, where players will be able to customize their characters a little bit? Okay. And is there any kind of co-op, up to four-player sport, similar? Okay, so the whole game can be played in four-player co-op. Uh, it's drop-in, drop-out, so you, st you can start alone, then someone joins you after a few hours, then you play together, then he drops out, and then you continue alone. What's important is that you don't have to do the same things together, so um, uh, you can do different missions, basically. You can go into different sections of the map, so you're just there in the same game world together. You can cooperate, but you don't have to. And as for the class systems, so class system, when you start a game, you choose from one of or four characters. But these characters start with the same basic skill set. And then when you get experience points, uh, you level up and you get to choose which skills do you like for your character. Uh, you can specialize in, say, one group of skills like uh, combat skills or, or movement skills or sur survival skills, but you don't have to specialize. And you can create. And I think that when you finish the game and you play along your friends, when you finish the game, your character will be quite different than your, 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 your friend's character. Does each character have their own personality? Uh, well, no, no. We, we wanted to create a system that, that really gives you freedom to create any character you like. And basically, the, the feeling of freedom and having lots of, cho lots of options to choose from was one of the main pillars of, of Dying Light. Uh, we have another question over here. Thank you very much. Being a bit off topic, but Dead Island Riptide's been out for quite a while now. Will there be any extra content coming out for that? Well, I'm not here to talk about Dead Island Riptide, but as far as I know, no. Okay. 
Uh, we have one more question over in this area, just there. And can you stand up when you ask questions? Thanks. Um, just wanted to ask about the day and night cycle. How does it actually progress from day to night? Okay, so so the day and night cycle, it cycles continuously. So so you can do any uh, when you start a mission, you can decide by yourself if you want to do a mission during the day or during the night, or maybe you want to start in the evening and then it just goes into the night. Uh, it cycles all the time. It cycles continuously, and uh, yeah, basically that's it. And of course, if you, dis you like I said, 95% of main story missions and 100% of our side missions, uh, it's up to you when, when you want to play them and when you want to complete them. Uh, but of course, when you play during the night, it is more difficult. So we have a, little, uh, have a couple of systems that kind of systems that, that kinda, kinda reward you for uh, playing during the night. Thanks. I have another question over here. There's a guy in the back, right there. Oh, one right at the back there, thank you. Will we be able to customize weapons and equipment like we did in Dead Island? Yes, Where sure, so you can, you can customize weapons uh, in Dying Light, you can upgrade weapons, you can craft weapons. We're not revealing our crafting system at, 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 this, at this moment, but uh, rest assured that it is an imp imp it's way better than it was in the island. We've read all the comments about really any part of the island on, on YouTube, on, on reviews, etc. And we kind of took our lessons from that. So there will be crafting in our game, there will be upgrading of weapons in our game, but the systems will, all, all of these systems will be improved. So will special abilities be included as well? Yep, yes. Fantastic, thank you. Any more questions at all? Yeah, here's a yeah. um, Are you able to sleep through the night? Yep, that's a, that's <laughs> a, yeah. That's the wimp's way out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course that's an option that we are considering, but the, the thing is that at the moment we're still balancing the day and night cycle. So yes, at the moment you can sleep through, during the night, but the, and you will be able to sleep during the night in the final game, but, but the basic idea is this, that we want to create an, the nighttime experience so engaging and so exciting that people just don't want to sleep during the night. Thank you. I've got time for one more question. Anyone got a question at all? Um, okay, well, leave it there. Thank you very, very much for coming along, and also, of course, thank you very much to uh, Techland. We've got um, FIFA coming up next, uh, so if you want to come to that, please go outside and come back in again. Uh, but for now, a big round of applause for Techland, please. Thank you, guys.